Hello, my name is Viri Chauhan and I'm going to provide you an insight into the libel scandal and its wider implications. It stands for the London Interchange Bank Offered Rate. It is essentially the interest rate that is set to which banks borrow and lend to each other. It affects over $300 trillion worth of financial products globally. The LIBOR rate was abused by traders seeking to get a better financial position for the banks they work for and also for themselves through performance bonuses. On the 3rd of August this year, Tom Hayes, a former trader and UBS and Citigroup, was found guilty of eight counts of conspiracy to defraud and sentenced to 14 years in prison for his role in the LIBOR scandal. One of the challenges prosecutors faced was finding the correct offence to charge for as the appropriate offences at the time were covered under misleading statements and in the Financial Services and Markets Act 2000. It was thought that a successful conviction would not be possible using these provisions. However, this has been addressed in the Banking Act 2012, which specifically cites offences which would include making misleading statements in relation to benchmarks such as LIBOR. Prosecutors also consider the relatively new Fraud Act, which repealed a number of deception offences around the law as fraud was overly confusing prior to this Act. Luckily for the Serious Fraud Office, as a prosecutor in this case, the legislators decide to keep the catch-all offence of conspiracy to defraud. There was criticism at the time, but now it seems like a genius trove, which was the offence that led to the successful conviction of Mr Hayes, and the Serious Fraud Office promised there are more to follow. For a fraud offence, dishonesty has to be proved, and in the case of Mr Hayes, this was directly or indirectly confirmed by himself in interviews with the SFO. As a result, the Serious Fraud Office have got their first conviction for libel. The Financial Services Banking Reform Act 2013 provides a jail term for reckless misconduct if a senior executive is found guilty of causing failure of their financial institution. In addition, the senior manager's regime places extra burden on key individuals in financial services. So, the legislation and regulation continue at an ever-increasing rate, but it will be interesting to see if this has an impact on the culture and behaviour in the future. Thank you.